YouTube, welcome to the top 16 of the Meta Weekly every single week. By watching as long as you can, that greatly supports this video. We have top players, top plays, liking, commenting, subscribing also greatly helps. Get ready for some great gameplay. Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Royal, Royal Dinos is here besides that Pancratops. Begin. Auto P, double DD Crow, and Max C. Well, I think Max C is going to be shutting down our turn completely. Generally, if you get Max C, your deck needs an efficient way to end on disruption after just maybe one or two special summons, or you have to have hand traps yourself. So, us having Max C is our only saving grace against the Max C. This is our normal summon, sending a giant Rex, miscellaneous source, making the Ovi Raptor unaffected. Now the DD Crows will be banishing the miscellaneous before it activates its effect to banish itself by a cost. So you do have to DD Crow before it activates, which maybe they would not have even done under Max C. Baryon King, Regulus off the top of the deck. We have Motorbike Searching. Max C versus Max C. You chose this path, it is only fair. And Super Heavy Samurai has less ways to deal with Max C. They can't play called by, called by cross outs. And generally, what they will do, Super Heavy Samurai will do against Max C is end on a Baguska and pass. So, are we really going that far into it? Are we gonna just go for lethal damage instead because we're going second? We have the Samurai Wagon, can attack while in defense. We are discarding a DD Crow, which if they activate Wakashi on the field, that tells you that they're going all in. This is a big balls play because it locks them out of summoning non-Super Heavy Samurai. They are committed to Super Heavy Samurai only. They're going for lethal damage. They're going to win right now. The Masuwaru is at 4,000 defense, can attack while on defense, and can attack twice when equipped to the Soul Horns. So just like that, lethal damage under the Maxi. Super heavy samurai for game. Take that maxi challenge and win. Very well done. Pot of P. We are digging deep. Six cards deep. What do we want here? If we grab Gamma, we could use Fossil Dig Miscellaneous, Send Miscellaneous, then we could Arcosaur. They can't DD Crow because we could Gamma the DD Crow. That'd be quite, oh, I, I think we're doing it. We're doing it. Counter the DD Crow. This is very interesting. We can't Gamma unless we maintain that we have no monsters on the field. So the most optimal use of the DD Crow would be now, which would play into the Gamma, so we can't DD Crow, and we also can't Valor. Valor's been shut off, and DD Crow has also been shut off. Wow. Very well done. Arcosaur pop the baby, activate the baby, chaining DD Crow to the baby does nothing here. And now let's get Lincoln. Lincoln Rebo it up. The Ovi Raptor cannot be Veilered. So what can we Veil? We uh, can Veiler the Sprite Elf if it tries to reborn the baby. We have the Meteorus on a destruction of a monster activating to summon itself onto the field as a level six tuner. Level six tuner allowing us to make a Baron to floor to negate that Veiler if we need to. And this is when we would Veil. We could Veil the elf. We're going to be banished from the graveyard, the giant Rex, and Link Rebo to summon an ultimate conductor, Tyranno, which will non-target spin the entire opponent's field face down. Flip it face down, not spin, I should say. As we exceed our Ovi Raptor and giant Rex into a Dulka, double monster negate. We're not going to even bother using the Veiler here. Very well done. Omni negate, double monster negate, non-target flip the field face down. And by popping the baby, can we go? We can't go into a panker top, so I'm not really sure if the baby goes into more disruption here. So about four disruption. We could elf reborn petite, then pop petite, then summon panker top. So it's about five, four to five disruption, depending on what we do here. That is gonna be disruption number one. Negate the wagon. All right, all right, all right. Very nicely done. Special summon our scales, reborning the wagon from the grave, not negating and destroying because we're going to flip that field face down. 
So with the Ultimate Conductor Tyranno non-target Papa Monster we controller in our hand, we're going to be putting it on the lower chain link to the Sprite Elf, but then the Elf's going to be countered by banishing the Petites. We don't get to summon the Panker Tops in the deck. Thus, we pop the Baby instead. We have two more disruptions here. But that's enough. <laughs> that is enough to scoop it up. As I was saying, the Baby's not turning into more disruption, but the Petite would have, which was stopped by the DD Crow. Very nicely done from both players. We'll top it in game three. Motorbike searching for our Wakashi. That is our one card wombo combo play. Making sure to not play into Gamma with the Max C. If you're ever wondering why are they not Max C'ing, they activated the special summon, they should have Max C'd. Well, Gamma is why. That Gamma was right there, ready to get negated. You have Soul Piercer activating the grab. You know, generally we would have just made a Baguska pass. But uh, we didn't. Wait, we don't play Baguska. Well, we do, we do, we do. Why did we not Baguska pass? Scarecrow pass instead of Baguska. Send the level four or uh, I don't know about that, huh? Ground Xeno grabbing a Xeno Meteoris. We are going to baby soar off the pop, summon the Soul Eater OV Raptor. We still have our normal summon being used up by the baby. Now, because you're using the effect to reborn a baby by popping the baby, we're going to negate your popping. But the miscellaneous will protect us from that pop. Now, this is where we could chain DD Crow to either use it on if we banish this baby and they reborn baby with the Movi Raptor, the baby does not activate after being popped because you popped it, then reborn it, it does not activate. But do we want to instead banish a miscellaneous source? Looks like we're waiting on that DD Crow. I, so on the resolution is when we would want to DD Crow. Meteors being triggered off of a monster being destroyed to summon itself onto the field as a level six tuner to make our Baron to floor. So we have to do it right here, right now. This is when we have to DD Crow on the resolution of this search, or they're gonna be able to make a Baron to floor. Baby pop, okay, resolution of the giant Rex. Now, we have to DD Crow. Now, right now, miscellaneous banish. Get show Conan into Baron to floor. Would it have been better to just banish the baby that was gonna be summoned? Ground Xeno banishing to Fusion Shokan with the hand in field to make a Transcendosaurus Giganto Zowler. Huh? You can target a dinosaur in your graveyard, add it to your hand. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's uh, all it's going to do. It does something if it gets destroyed, though. If this card is destroyed, shuffle a normal monster in your graveyard into the deck, then you can special summon this card. Oh, then it will trigger to pop a, up to two cards in the field. Okay, that's interesting. Over 12,000 damage on the field. Lethal with the Baron to floor, my favorite dinosaur boss. Very nice. Huh, that was horrible. Uh, red does nothing. We have Book of Moon. Target a monster, flip it face down. We do have Nibiru though. Will we play into a Nibiru? We'll count the summons. Mathmex Sigma being summon number one, Firewall Defensor, summon number two, Lingaribo being able to negate the back row trap, but it's not a trap. We're on summon number three, summon number four, Book of Moon flipping down the Sigma. Interesting. Linking this up in a Splash Mage, we can now Nibiru. This is it. Firewall Guardian being reborn, Splash Mage reborning from the graveyard. Now, the Book of Moon monster will not be tributed for the Nibiru. Whatever's face down is protected. Grabbing a circular. We have used up our normal summon already, so we're going to special summon it, sending from the deck to then tribute the Sigma that's face down. So now Nibiru tribute the whole field to reborn the diameter. If they exceed with the diameter, they can negate Nibiru. But then, oh my gosh, I, I feel like this Nibiru was not good uh, holding on to it because now. They have three math mechs in the grave to use with diameter. Uh, I should say the super factorial. So now they're gonna be able to send from the hand and field and have an Omni negate. Getting them access to the diameter was a huge mistake. Yep, yep, yep. Sending, getting that diameter in the grave with the circular. But the thing is circular is a three of. So, you know, you're thinking maybe they would have had it in their hand anyway. If circular was limited to one, then this would have been a much bigger mistake, I'd say. 
Holy moly, like, what are we doing with the Nibiru? <laughs> what? 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 I, like, I guess we just like decided that duel is over and we don't want them to play around Nibiru for game two and three. Yeah. Uh, by the way, multiplication, multiplying the attack of the dark fluid. Okay. What the heck? End of Anubis? Is this a good card in the current meta? All cards and effects that target a card in the graveyard or that activate in the graveyard are negated. So even chain link blocking a card like the flame burst activate in the grave, it doesn't matter. It's still negated by end of the Nubis. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. We have dark beckoning beast grabbing the opening of the gate, special summoning a carrot to help play around something like an impermanence. We're on summon number three, summon number four. We're about to go into summon number five, but you can't Nibiru on summon five because the gigantic sprite locks both players out of summoning non level two, rank two, link two monsters just like that. No Nibiru. Blue on summon grabbing the limited to one jet. We're then going to be linking this off in a Sprite Elf. Even if the Gigantic Sprite leaves the field, you still are locked out of summoning Nibiru. You can't do it. We are going to be using the opening of the Spirit Gates to discard and reborn our Beckoning Beast. By getting the Angler in the Graveyard, we're gonna summon two Nimble Monsters from the deck, now making a Mannequin Cat. Mannequin Cat is the way to get End of Anubis on the field. That's the interesting play. So you will be able to, if a monster is summoned to your opponent's field and it's a dark monster, you could then summon the end of Anubis. Okay, interesting. Let's read that exactly. Your opponent summons a monster to their field. While you control this monster, target any face-up monster your opponent controls. Summon a monster with the same type or attribute. It doesn't have to be same type and attribute. So if the opponent summons a fiend or dark, end of Anubis is coming. And does this summon from the hand or only from the deck? Hand, deck, or Grave, we could have discarded to this to then reborn it. We then have Mascarina to link off with the opponent and the double cross works if you have an Xyz on the field. Target a monster in the field or in the graveyard and attach that target to your rank two Xyz as a material. All right, so the mannequin cat will suck up an attachment. And then we also have a spell and trap card negate with the carrot. We don't have any more disruption beyond that. Well, we have the sprint also, which is another disruption. This says that your opponent, if a monster is special summoned while this card is on the field, you could detach a material to then target that monster, spin it to the hand. So disruption, disruption, disruption into end of Anubis, about four disruptions. Let's go. Circular sending from the deck, the Sigma, Sigma reborn from the graveyard, triggering the circular to grab an equation which could reborn from the grave for further extension. We have Lingaribo to negate the double cross trap activation as we reborn that circular to make a much safer play. The Sprint is being triggered to spin the Lingaribo back, which is quite sus because it tells the opponent that you have a good trap, right? Then we have the Alan Burt on summon what are we summoning? An Earth or a Cyburst from the hand or deck? Huh? We're also Mask Arena linking off during the opponent's turn into Disruption here. Let's get to it. Mech Knight Crusadia Avram Max. It is untargetable and indestructible by card effects. How do you deal with it? You can't really battle into it because it gains attack equal to the special zone monster it's battling with. Huh? Amorphage Goliath. Neither player can special summon from the extra deck. But we made sure to summon for the extra deck first. We got a floodgate on the field. And we still have double cross and we still have carrot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's over. Elf reborn the jet. Jet gets searching. <laughs> Mannequin cat into a floodgate. Diameter Reborn, but you can't use the extra deck tribute to Reborn or summon from the hand. We're passing. What do we do against this? Neither player could summon from the extra deck. Wow. Tributing for the end of Anubis. You now can't activate cards in the graveyard nor cards that target a card in the graveyard. Holy moly, buh. Boost up the Avermax for 3k to the face. 1400, 1000. Lethal damage with the Goliath and just like that, Stun Sprite. 
mannequin stun sprite. There, there's no side deck in this tournament, so we are main deck in these crazy cards. Cynet Mining. We are going to be Ash in that Cynet Mining, playing right into a triple tactics talent. And we also have Nibiru to further protect us from their plays. Are we looking at the hand? We are going for that draw too. Not counting the maxi or disruption. Let's go. Beckoning is searching for the opening of the spirit gates. We're gonna be linking this off into the sprint. Sprint's gonna send an angler from the deck to the grave. Angler will trigger to summon two nimbles from the deck. Nimble, nimble, all under the freaking max C. Blue on special summon, grabbing a jet. We have already used up our normal summon, so we keep on special summoning into that max C. We're gonna be linking off with the dark fluid, losing a disruption now. Wait, we also can't disable worm. So we lost the aggregator and we lost the activation of the disave worm because you need a link for a higher cyber. So goodbye, goodbye. We're now down to double disruption and the underworld goddess can negate the super factorial. Super factorial reborn from the graveyard gets negated by the goddess. What the hell? Uh, huh? Negate, negate, negate. Oh, we have Baylor. Baylor, negate, the negate. Negate! So we still have the send effect and the negate. So you are now successfully negated because you were targeted. Reborn, reborn, reborn. We're gonna have the ability to send from the field in hand to the graveyard. And then we have an Omni negate through the diameter giving the exceed that effect. Get sending. Goodbye triple tactics talents in the sprint. So when do we negate? We are negating the sprite starter. Now, Sprite Starter states that you can only activate one Sprite Starter per turn. We are negating the effect, not the activation. So if you had another copy, it would not be activatable. We're normally, again, something like a Baron to Floor. It would have been activatable again. We now have nothing left besides, well, we keep drawing in a Disruption. We drew in a Veiler. We drew into the DD Crow. DD Crow is going to be banishing the Dark Beckoning Beast as it's attempting to be reborn from the grave with the opening of the Spirit Gates. Ain't no freaking way, mate. Holy moly. There goes your uh, Mad Lad Laplacian. End our turn, now back to you. Now the Goddess is no longer negated. Goddess is unaffected if you don't target her, and she can negate the Sigma if we wanted to, which we chose to not do. Should we have, uh, maybe we're saving it for a Link that reborns? Negate the equation effect instead. Okay, sure. Respectable. You can attack over her with a Access Code Talker if you want to. Update Jammer will give a monster the ability to double attack. Access Code Talker with the double attack. This is not game. We can't pop the Underworld Goddess. So we have 4,300 attack, double attack. Okay. We're gonna pop the back row because we know we can't take out the Goddess. Attack one, attack two. Not enough for lethal as we have been saying. What other disruption do we have? We just have Ash. Ash is our only disruptive play. <laughs> and our only play is setting a dark beckoning beast. Huh? Axis Code Talker, banishing the Splash Mage, taking out the beast, summoning enough for lethal damage and just like that. Math Mac defeats Sprite Stun. Sprite Boss Monster Stun. We have Ash on summon. Search for the Poplar against Max C. Of course, we're going to Max C, but that Max C will get fingered. Negate the Max C. The Flame Burst cannot be targeted, nor can the Formula Synchron, so get ready. Ash on summon will be met with the Flame Burge, summoning a Mascarina and chaining our Formula Synchron. We are untargetable completely. So first we make a Baron to Floor, which also puts the Baron to Floor under the Elf to make it untargetable. 
Andy Mascarina, also untargetable because of the way we chained these effects to ensure that it would be summoned under the elf. Poplar being triggered after being added. We are not going to negate that with the Baron to floor. We are ready with that Mascarina. I feel like even if elf was not allowed to be linked with, th th this should not say could not be used as link to turn it summoned. It should say could not be used as a link material. Just straight up. Why? Why? Even that would be a nerf. Poplar activating on summon. Ash activate to search. Oak activate on the jet synchron to add it to the hand. Errata, they're not, I don't think they really do, uh, I mean, I say they don't do big erratas anymore, but they just errataed the Sorceress Link, so maybe. Subversion is ready to push a card in the field into the back row, but it targets, and we can't target the Baron to floor nor the Mascarina, so what do we do? Anima to suck up the Oak, Link Karibo to dodge the suck. You ain't sucking today. Very well done. So now that Anima has been used, we could then go into the Mascarina play whenever into our fat Apollo USA. Baron to floor with the Omni negate. Now that the Baron to floor has used up its negate, I do think we are more likely to be activating that Mascarina as it will keep its untargetable effect. So if we were to Mascarina early, the Baron to floor would have become uh, targetable. Triggering the Divine Temple off of the opponent's summon to summon a monster from our back row onto the field, come forth in Poplar. We have Ash and Poplar being summoned through the effect of our own Flamebears as we set up a Wanted Seeker into our back row through the Black Witch. As the Poplar we newly summoned searches for our original Sin. We're going to link this up into Hita. Hita can steal a Fire Monster from the opponent's graveyard, and that is when Mascarina says no. We're not going to allow that. We have Alternative Art, Apollo say Quadra, Monster, Negate. 3,200, ready to negate that Hita. Hita attempting to steal the opposing Snake Eye Oak. Not going to happen. Negate. Now down to 2400, it is small enough to be attacked over by the Diablo Star, losing its three other negates. Now we can main phase two, Promethean Princess, which triggers the opposing player's Promethean Princess to pop the Elf and the Promethean Princess, but first we'll be chaining our Elf to Reborn from the Grave, our Mascarina. Come forth, Mascarina. Now Mascarina is a hard once per turn effect, but Formula Synchron isn't. So if you had more cards to Synchro with the Formula Synchron, that's a card you Reborn and keep on using. We're gonna use the Promethean Princess to Reborn a Fire from the Grave. We're gonna be chaining our Seeker to grab a Diablo Star, which does not add any disruption whatsoever. I think we should just speed this up and end this duel, yes? We can't even trigger our own Promethean since we have no fire on the field. We're gonna steal the opposing player's Flame Burge, pushing the Diablo Star on the field into the back row. Over 12,000 damage on the field. Snytrox, who went first, ultimately just winning the duel. You have to play against Valor, Ash, and Nibiru. We do have extension through Diablo Star, so Valor on the Ash. Very well done here. But then we extend with the Diablo Star which you can't use Ash on. So we're on summon number one and two more disruptions. Don't get confused here. We're on summon number two, set up into the back row, an original sin, which could be negated by Ash. Ash negate, just like that, mate. And now after just two summons and a Nibiru left, looks like we have to end our turn. But we have Wanted Seeker to copefully draw into something great. Off the top of the deck, we have more disruption, so that was pretty good. Now, we are the ones with two disruption through the Maxi and Ash Blossom. Poplar grabbing the Divine Temple. Divine Temple setting up the Flame Burge, linking this up into our Link Karibo. Poplar triggering to equip an Ash into the back row. Link Karibo being sent to the grave for our Black Witch. Black Witch is gonna be setting up into the back row our original Sinful, which will we Ash or will we Maxi? We are going to Ash. Now, you could argue that Ash is extra protection here because let's say they finger or cross out the Ash, you then chain Maxi. If you activate Maxi first, they finger or cross out or Ash the Maxi, you then can't chain the Ash to the original Sinful. You have to be the direct chain link. So for both cards, it is better to start off with Ash first. Negate. And, uh, you know, we have our Maxi that we have chosen to not even have to use. Let's go. Very well done. 
Subversion with the ability to push a card on the field into the back row. There's no disruption that we have to use this on. And Apollo USA could be a good target for the Sinful Spoils to push it. We are triggering our Divine Temple to summon from our back row our Flame Burge. And during our own turn, we are going to max C because you like special summoning on my turn. Now we are on summon number one against the opposing Nibiru. So we do want to pay attention to that. Poplar, activate summon. We're on summon number two, grabbing our own Divine Temple here. Set up that Divine Temple, putting a Flame Burge in the back row, and we're now summon number three. Number three, number three. Poplar triggering, equipping into the back row. Ash is sending itself, plus Poplar to summon from the deck in Oak. Now, what could really screw up this Nibiru? If we were to activate the Flame Burge to make the talent activatable to look at the hand and put the Nibiru back in the deck. So if we just stay tight, do nothing, just chill, we will be able to Nibiru. Oak summon number four, we're on summon number five. Now we could do it. And I feel like, uh, yeah, I guess we have to do it now. Let's go, let's go. We're gonna tribute. So what's happening here is Divine Temple will trigger off of Nibiru to summon the Flame Burge, but there's another chain on this chain link that's stealing that Flame Burge before the Divine Temple triggers. So this is exactly how we did this. And being under max C, holy moly, draw two under that Nibiru is huge. Take that Flame Burge, and now we don't get to summon it. We are under zero uh, normal summons left. We don't have an original Sinful. We have Diablo Star, which is activatable to summon. So we do have the extension through the Nibiru. That is a lot of, uh, we drew four off of, wait, yeah, how many? How many times are we drawing for Max C? We drew, we drew, we drew, we drew, we drew five on our own. We Max seed on our own turn and we drew five. Okay. Diablo Star is our further extending. We're scooping it up. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, draw five on your own turn with Max C. <laughs> it's a little bit better than Pot of Greed. Let's keep on going. We have Bistil in the main deck. Very good for countering the Mascarina equipment in the back row. Also pretty good against Labyrinth. Labyrinth becoming a super top deck to be countering. Normal Summon, Jet, Synchron. We do have Original Sinful. Very well done. That is quite disruptive here. We still have more plays though. So against someone who's playing the Formula Synchron variant, it plays right through Bestials like nothing, does not even care. We still have our Baron to floor, we still have Trigger the Flame Burge, pretty damn good. I mean, you know, stopping the Apollo saying the Mascarina was pretty damn good. We have Wanted Seeker in the draw phase to play around a Droll. We're gonna be able to make a Baron to floor, plus we have Valor and Ash. We have Valor negating the Poplar as we now chain our Formula Synchron to make that Baron to Floor play right here, right now, which makes the Triple Tactics talent activatable. Oh, you know, the Valor did that itself. Now, Baron to Floor could not be targeted, but the Triple Tactics talent does not target, but we have Cross Out Designate and we should be playing Triple Tactics talent ourselves to banish it from the deck to negate. Reborn the Poplar. So we have Baron to Floor and Ash. And you know, the cross out will kind of, it, cross out in the mirror match is straight up disruption. We count that as disruption. It can negate anything. So that is in fact our third disruption. We're using Baron to Floor instead of cross out. Is that correct? I'm not sure. I am not sure. That cross out better be good. We had literally negate anything versus almost negate everything, but it doesn't destroy. So we have negate and destroy versus negate and do not destroy. But the the cross out designate could be better than Baron to Floor if let's say you call Flame Burge. Every effect of Flame Burge is negated. The grave, the field, the second copy, it's all negated. So that's where this actually could be better than Baron. But we're calling Kurikara Divine Carnet Curry Kara, let, let's talk about this ruling real quick. You banish the monster, negate its effects, as well as the activated effects on the field. Uh, so the Curry Kara could still tribute the fields, even with being negated. Uh, okay. 
Come forth in Shokan into Promethean Princess. Promethean is going to be able to reborn, but not because it triggered the other Promethean Princess from popping the Promethean Princess. Get Promethean. Reset up our Flame Burge. We're going to use the Subversion to push the targetable Elf into the back row as the Baron to floor and the Promethean were untargetable. Now making Hida. Hida is going to be able to reborn from the opposing graveyard as the Jerusalem sends the grave trigger to send the Baron floor to the grave, stealing the opponent's Poplar, using the effect of Wanted Seeker to randomly draw one, which Ash is negating. We don't want that random draw one. That random draw one could be the end of us. Ida going into the oak, ending the turn. Flamebears in the end phase, stealing the opposing player's poplar, triggering our Promethean Princess to get popping. So come forth and summon. We're going to be popping our the opposing Promethean, reborning our Promethean. Come forth. And now that Promethean was our disruption that uh, I, I feel like we're screwed anyway. Yeah, uh, what can we really do? We're, we're just activating cards. By Promethean in our end phase, we now can't Promethean any other effect. Not that would even really save us. Ash add the Poplar, Reborn the Oak in the Poplar, add back the Jet Synchron. We still have a normal summon here, Unicorn on summon, discard the Veiler, spin back the Promethean Princess into the extra deck. We are then going to use up our normal summon, linking this up into an access code talker. 5300 attack, non-target pop a card in the field, triggering the Hita to search our deck for Poplar. Poplar trigger summon itself onto the field, which will trigger our Divine Temple to summon our Sprite Elf from our back row back onto the field here. Adding an original Sinful for the next turn that will surely never come. Access the codes, banishing our Promethean, open up that field with over 11 thousand damage on the field lethal damage all right all right hajime now what sucks here is the defensor requires a garnet a garnet's a card that must be in the deck in order to perform the combo so what happened here is we can't summon the firewall monster from the deck because we opened up with that firewall monster. So now this is just a dead brick. It's no good. But to offset that, we have a parallel Xyz. That's pretty good. We now have the Dark Fluid Terror Hurts, which will be sending a spell and trap card negate, summoning the lady onto the field here. And this will also be able to trigger negate a card in the field. Eat Soul Draw, drawing that hand trap. So what are our disruptions? We have trigger negate, 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 and spell and trap card negate. We have four disruptions. Ash will surely be used on the pot of E. Negate. Three more, three more, three more. What's good, what's good? What is good? Into attack position to battle we go. Big enough to take out that heat so, so you don't further draw more cards. And we didn't have to use up our disruptions. Let's go. Veiler's now turned off. We do have to save worm to negate a back row card and chain link block the lady. Ooh, we are not negating Welcome Labyrinth. The save worm's usable on both turns. Yeah, so. Spell Trap card is activated while controlling for a higher. Banish this card, negate the activation. Interesting. So we're just chain link blocking Lady with the Terror Hurts, sending a multiplication to multiply the attack of the Terror Hurts. Huh? It's going to boost it up to 16,000 attack? I want to see it happen. I want to see that 16,000 damage go in. Reborn the Dotscaper being sent to the graveyard. We have G Golem, which could reborn the Transcode Talker from the grave. We have, what is going on? Why, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we saved our Desave Worm. We can't activate it. The Lovely blocks Desave Worm from being activatable. So we did what we thought was smart, which was chain link blocking the lady and then saving to save worm, but they then summoned a lovely so you can't activate to save worm whatsoever. Holy moly. So we get to set up a card in the back row, lovely protecting from the negate. 
pop of the Entis. Now, Entis pops the Firewall Dragon, right? Well, we have in the graveyard the Defensor, right? Defensor in the name is defense. It will banish in the graveyard to protect instead of being destroyed, but we could double destroy it. Lovely could destroy it, it gets protected. Then the Entis can destroy it. We could double up the destruction. Double destroy that fool. Destroy, Defensor, Banish, Protect. Lovely, pop it. Oh my God. Now to save Worm in the graveyard for no reason. 3,000 attack Alimber after the Reborn of the Equation, taking out the Lovely. I mean, we lose the duel now. Because Lovely blocked the save Worm from being activatable, what do we do? We used this. So what the problem here is we did not play around Valor. We could have toggled on draw phase, activated the big welcome to play around it and also change the big welcome and would have made much more bigger and impactful plays. We're still in a really good spot here, but you know, it's a small little detail to remember as a Labyrinth player, toggle on, play around Valor if you can. So Ariana, activate, and this would all be in the draw phase here and we'd have another trap in the back row, which would be activatable if we add a Ku Clock discard, then uh, discard it. We are going to then use the Stovey to get the transaction. It really does not matter. It does not matter. One bit. Labyrinth winning the duel. And all came down to lovely blocking the Desave Worm from being able to negate. Begin. We're playing against Imperm and Ash. When do we Ash? When do we Imperm? Let's go. What does Terra Hurts do? Gets Diameter into the Graveyard plus a Desave Worm. So we're gonna have the full play of Super Factorial through an Ash, through an Imperm. Beautifully done. Gets Diameter into the Grave. Wow, that's incredible. Very well done. Should Reboot be set here? Super Factorial is gonna get it out early. Chaining the lady to it, which whatever we set is going to also be sent to the grave, which could be a big welcome, making it activatable that turn. We got to save worm for the spell and trap card negate. Big welcome going into the grave. So let's do it. Come forth. Diameter, circular, sigma, lapletion. We have omni negate plus send from the hand and two cards in the field. Goodbye hand, goodbye field, goodbye field. Full field and hand plus negate. It's negate the effect. Now, to save worm negates the activation. Activation on the field spell, it will go to the grave. If we use diameter to negate the field spell, it stays on the field. So that is the big difference here on how to screw up your negate. Do not screw it up. Negate. The activation. And then we have the welcome labyrinth, which we lost out on our negate. The diameter is only for that turn. So the once until the end phase, we have that negate, the temporary negate, which wasn't even possible to negate it properly. So we had to use our one of to save Worm instead. Now, this has a secret effect in the battle phase. It states that negate any monster effects activated by your opponent during the battle phase. So what you would have to do, and the game would not help you with this, you'd have to toggle on. It would say your opponent's about to end the main phase. Would you like to activate any of your cards, which would possibly lead into a monster effect to be used before they enter the battle phase, which would then be negated by the Terror Hertz, which is now doubling its attack to over 20,000 attack, 21,000 Ash negate. And just like that, played through an Ash, played through an Imperm, still set up the Terror Hertz, properly negated with the Desave Worm, lethal damage. That was great. Thank you, Supreme King. Let's take this into game three. Opening up that limited to one pot of E. Ain't no way. We have Ariana on summon searching for the lady. Lady come forth and summon. Ku Clock making the newly set card activatable as long as we have a labyrinth monster. Chaining the lady to the trap to set a new trap from the deck. We had nothing to chain link block it, unfortunately. If you had a Bestial, we could have chain banished the Ku Clock to chain link block. Thus, they would no longer have access to the clock. They wouldn't have set a new trap from the deck. Th those are big plays. It's a big thing to have something like Bestial or even Ghost Spell to help you. 
A ghost spell in addition to Ash are two ways to stop a big welcome. So especially if they're activating it early, that'd be additional negates. So these are just more cards to play that are good against multiple different decks, but even better against Labyrinth. So with the Lovely on the field, we can't chain our monster effects to the traps. They got Daruma to flip the whole field face down. How are we gonna play through Nibiru? Small world. We are bridging the Dotscaper into an Ash. Ash to negate a big welcome or welcome, which actually, like, this is not a good idea because there's Lovely. So even if there was a welcome Labyrinth, you can't even Ash it. So the secret effect, she's hiding it under her dress you can't chain monster effects to traps. So this was bad, a bad small world. Summoning circular with the Sigma to trigger the circular. We have Sigma getting fingered by the call by the grave. Negate, now the circular's not gonna trigger unless we normal summon diameter, which we don't have a monster to reborn with diameter. We're passing on the circular search to instead reborn it with... I, so I know this is crazy. Lingaribo and Ash don't work. Like, they do nothing. It does nothing to the trap because Lovely. Lovely stops Disavorum. It stops Lingaribo. It stops Ash. It stops Ghost Belt. It stops. Full stop. But uh, Lovely doesn't understand that. So they are big welcoming the Lingaribo that can't even stop the traps. Maybe we just did it on purpose to get Poppin. Maybe we still have a normal summon. So we have to randomly pop that diameter to just win. We win. If we pop it, we win. Will he pop the diameter? One and three. One, 33% chance. Nope. Pop in the ash. We got that diameter. Imperm. <laughs> negate. Which Lingaribo could not negate. Can't negate because lovely mate. Lovely's crazy. Damn. 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 Let's just uh, read that effect loud and clear for everyone in the back here. It states that you, this is the first line. Your opponent cannot activate any monster from the hand, field, grave, banish, deck, extra deck, does not care in response to the activation of a normal trap card. Now, it's not the activation of the effect of a trap, so they could still chain a monster effect to, let's say, a transaction rollback, but the activation of the card on the field that you can't chain. No Lingaribo, no Ash, nothing. Ash negate the wanted seeker mate. Do we know that we're playing against Vanquished Soul? The Pantera is a special summon and Durandal searches for Raisin, which will be our normal summon, and now we're good. But what is this deck? Is it Snake Eyes or Vanquished Soul? It, both, but more of what? I, I don't even know. I feel like there's a lot of no-nos here. I'm not too keen on ashing a Seeker. Also, Imperm onto a Raisin. If they have any of the bigger Vanquish Soul monsters, they could chain return the Raisin back to the hand to dodge it. But it worked out. Okay. That's fine. We could see Imperm. It's high risk, high reward. I would say it's high risk, medium reward. I think the risk outweighs the benefit. Oh, we have double Imperm. Let's go. Imperm again onto the Rock of the Vanquisher. We're not going to be able to add a card in the graveyard back to the hand. And we effectively have been shut down. Raisin shut down. Ariane needs to discard a trap or send a trap on the field to the graveyard in order to activate her effect, but we're not using it to summon an Ariana. Okay. Interesting. With the Dogmatic of Punish, we could punish a card on the field plus further punish another card in the field through the Elder Entity Entis. Send the Raisin. Kit Kalos. Not only being used and abused with Nadir Servant, but also Dogmatic a Punishment to mill five. Get the transaction roll back into the grave. This is it. What are we milling? What are we milling? Ariana also being triggered to draw a card here. Drawing a card that we could discard with the Stovey, that's gonna be pretty good. Band tier, band tier. Still waiting for that mill. Where's the mill? Where's the mill? Turn, uh, we got Borger here. Randomly drawing in. Oh, we're gonna set it also. Did we mill anything good? We do have a big welcome activatable. We did not mill one of our three transaction rollbacks. We have the chandelier, which could trigger in the grave. We're gonna use the big welcome to spin back to get triggering. Trigger the chandelier. 
Add back to the hand here. We have no regular Welcome Labyrinth, which would have also been triggerable. Borger reveal to burn for 1,500, effectively 3,000 between two turns. We have Chandelier and Destovi being discarded to set up a what is this? Target two Labyrinth spell and trap cards that are banished or in the graveyard, except a Labyrinth setup. Shuffle them into the deck. Then, if you control a fiend, you could special, you could set a non Labyrinth of normal traps with different names directly from your deck, equal to the number shuffled. Huh? Regular Welcome Labyrinth being met with a Max C. Remember, if there's a Lovely, you're gonna have to Max C early. You can't chain it to the Welcome Labyrinth. Lovely's now here. Triggering the Divine Temple to summon the Ash in the back, or we're gonna use the big Welcome to spin back the Rock of the Vanquisher within the draw phase before it can even activate. Triggering the Lovely to pop a card in the field or in the hand. Triggering Torby, triggering Chandelier. Ash being triggered on summon to add from the deck. Borger is not triggering, but it's activating to burn for 1500 damage. We're putting them on a clock. The clock is the Borger burning for 1500 every turn. So two more turns of Borger, we lose. Turn six, the game is over. So we have to do something before then. And we're under max C. Taking that Borger out, Poplar being triggered after being added, summoning itself onto the field, adding an original Sinful to be used next turn. We are now using the Labyrinth setup, returning the Banished Big Welcomes to set up a Daruma and an Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Holy moly. Stovey discarding Chandelier to set up from the deck a Big Welcome Labyrinth, which will trigger the Lovely to pop a card in the field or in the hand during the next turn. Poplar being triggered to equip a card into the back row, wiping out that Ash. The Imperms are not usable here. Recycling a Dogmatic of Punishment. Now, despite a massive Max C, it's still drawing off of Max C. Labyrinth has a really good field here. Holy moly. Let's draw for our turn. Let's see what we're dealing with. We have eight cards in our hand, but we have Dogmatic of Punishment, which could pop two cards in the field. We have Eradicator, which could delete all spells from our hand and field. So the field spell's gone, the Poplar's gone. The original sinful is gone, but then Poplar will trigger to reactivate another card into the back row. We then have the big welcome, which can non-target pop a card in the field and pop another card in the field or in the hand through the lovely and draw two cards with the Ariana and Ariane. And then we have Daruma, which could flip the whole field face down and the link monsters will be sent to the grave. This is a ton to play through. Let's go. Activating Big Welcome early to summon a lady from the deck, returning back Lovely, so we're not triggering Lovely here, but we could resummon the Lovely through the effect of Ariane and Ariana. Ariane draw. Ariana draw. Stovey summon itself onto the field. Chandelier add from the graveyard to the hand. Okay. Add. Summon. Draw, then special summon Lovely. There we go. Draw, then set a trap if we want. We're gonna set the overroot. Triggering the welcome to be set. Now, how do we know it's activatable? If you pay attention, the, the Shadow Mist are cards that are activatable. So not activatable, not activatable. The Dogmatica, which is flipping up right here. So we have Eradicator, Daruma, and Dogmatica. Pop in the Poplar with the Entis, then further pop the Field Spell. Triggering Lovely to pop a random card in the hand. We randomly pop the Flame Burge, will it trigger? Are there enough level one fires in the grave? There are. So we pop that Flame Burge, it will activate. Taking out the Dr. Mad Love randomly. Ash equip into the back row, Chandelier setting up a card. Now we have another card activatable. So right now we have Eradicator, we have Daruma, and we have the Transaction Rollback to copy any trap from the grave. Okay, okay. Send the Ash, summon the Oak. Oak, activate Reborn from the Banisher Grave back onto the field. Ash on summon, searching for a Jet Synchron. We have not used up our normal summon yet. Eradicate right now, spells. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. We looked at the hand. It, it would have at least destroyed a face-up continuous spell if we had that into the back row or even the field spell. A dead Eradicator. But it did trigger the Labyrinth Labyrinth to get a Lovely back onto the field, but her destroy effect is a hard once per turn. We have Seeker going for a random draw. All these Imperms that are just not usable this turn. 
Raisin on search is going to get Darumad. Flip the whole field, including our own monsters, face down. Now, all we have left is a transaction rollback. None of these backward traps can be activated. And we didn't have anything that was transactionable. Okay. Transaction rollback is copying the Eradicator by calling spell first, then trap. That is the double whammy. Goodbye to all the traps. Goodbye to all the spells. Now, can we imperm the lady to at least negate the tears of the overroot and the big welcome? No, we can't because nothing on the field is impermeable because the lady cannot be targeted. And even if she could be targeted, only one of the imperms would be able to negate the column because it has to effectively negate the monster. <laughs> That's revealing. That's not activating. Goodbye to the entire back row. Holy moly, that's crazy. Big welcome to spin a card to trigger the lovely to pop a card in the field or in the hand, triggering Ariane and Ariana to draw, draw. So we've drawn four cards with them. We're about to draw into four cards. We drew two during the opponent's turn, two again, continually drawing every single turn. Holy moly, draw into pot of E, not activatable because uh, we're making our plays within the main phase. We're now scooping it up. Absolute insanity. Max C in the standby phase is going to be playing around triple tactics talent. Stake your soul, revealing a fire flame burst to summon a Jow Long from the deck. Reveal double fire, ain't no way. Snake Eyes and Vanquish Soul is a playable deck. That is crazy. We're going to be adding the Mad Love Borger. Return back the Raisin with the Mad Love. We could draw a card every single turn now. Let's get that card advantage off the top of the deck. We have Wanted Seeker. We have already used up our normal summon. The Black Witch is ready to send a card from the hand or field to the grave to come forth and summon. We got Rock of the Vanquisher to summon the Mad Love, searching for a spell or trap Vanquish Soul. Snow Devil could destroy all monsters on the field non-targeting, as we now have Mascarina. Mascarina ready to link up into disruption during the opponent's turn. What is our play? You're now in the main phase. You generally you you will want to use Imperm in the draw phase. You're gonna have to toggle on. The Rock of the Vanquisher and the Mascarina are both not activatable outside of the main phase. Now, the Rock of the Vanquisher cannot be used as a link material. So we can't even activate Mascarina, then chain summon a monster to then link with that monster because it's illegal activation at the moment. Imperm negates the Ariana. I can agree with an Imperm on Ariana, just not an Ash. Very well done. Rock of the Vanquisher, summoning our Raisin, Raisin activate, grabbing the Caesar. Caesar could return Raisin to come forth and summon, but we're not going to do that until the end of main phase two. Now, the Caesar can only pop a card on the field if we have a Dark, Earth, and Fire. We're missing Earth from the hand here. Dogmatica Punishment onto the Mascarina within the draw phase. Get it out early. Triggering the Ariana to draw a card, and now we're going to get fun with Kick Callus Mill 5. It was a bad, bad mill, bad, not good, not good. Drawn to the Imperm, set the Imperm, but it's not activatable. The turn it was set. We have Raisin being summoned into the same column as the Ariana getting ready to wipe it out, but we'll also lose our Rock of the Vanquisher. In response to the Raisin, we're going to add back the Borger and the Grave to our hand as the Raisin searches for our Earth. Now the Caesar Valleys can non-target destroy a card on the field. So what happens here is... If we summon Lady, return back the Ariana, the Lady can't be destroyed because of the newly set in permanence. If we summon Lovely, pop the Lovely, the Lovely does not activate to pop a card in the field or in the hand because it was popped before it could activate. We're gonna find out what we do. What are we doing? Going for Lady, and there you go. She's protected thanks to the impermanence, as we were saying. Borger returned the Raisin. Borger is now here to battle we go. Caesar is big enough to wipe her out. Any battle damage taken when your opponent has access to Borger is not good because that is 1,500 damage every single turn within the battle phase. We are burning for an additional 1,800 damage plus 1,700 attack. Thus, we have lethal damage with Borger during the draw phase. This is it. Wait, we need that Earth. We, need, we don't have it. Earth, fire. We have fire, we don't have earth. Oh, whoa, we needed that Pantera. So this was a mistake to summon. We should have summoned the Raisin instead. 
Can we add an earth in the graveyard to our hand? Uh, summon Raisin, search for an earth. Raisin, activate, search for earth, and then we have game. Oh my god, it just got negated. I need the search. Let me search. Let me burn you for game. Yeah. Uh, hmm. This is awkward. We should have one with Borger already. Setting up with the Welcome Labyrinth. Borger is going to go for a draw. Drawing into the Maxi Earth. Activate the Caesar to pop a card in the field, which is also dependent on having an Earth. It just like that, we're taking this into Game 3. Yu-Gi-Oh is doing that too. I think Dual, Monster, uh, Dual Masters was doing it. I think that's the name of the anime. I forget what it's called. Coo Clock with the Ariana, making the big welcome. Activatable the turn, it was set. Summoning Lovely, return Ariana, randomly pop a card from the hand, randomly taking out that much needed Raisin. As we then recycle the big welcome to use again, we desperately need something to stop this, but we have nothing. Add the Black Witch, activate Welcome Labyrinth, summoning our Lady. Now we can chain Lady to the big welcome, and we can make some plays, potentially with the Ku Clock setting a new trap, activate while the turn it was set. Waiting with the lovely pop, when is the most opportune moment to disrupt as a Labyrinth player? So if you want to play Labyrinth, take note of us waiting on the big welcome. Original Sinful, Ash is going to negate. This potentially plays no Gamma, but I could argue that Gamma is not really played as much in Snake Eyes. I could double check the analytics on that. Seeker to draw a card by returning the original Sinful. We now have our normal summon being used on the Mad Love grabbing the Snow Devil. For non-target, destroy the field of monsters during the next turn. We are going to spin back non-target, return the Lovely back to the hand. Now, the Lovely could be resummoned with the Big Welcome and could still pop a card in the field. Rock of the Vanquisher, only during the main phase, summon a monster or add from the graveyard. Raisin in the same column as Lady cannot destroy her because she's indestructible. But now you can. This is where you can not only chain link block the lady, but also destroy the lady before she gets returned back of the hand in favor of the lovely to then pop a card in the field. Now the raisin has to reveal a fire and dark. We have a dark and we have a fire and it cannot be activated in the same chain of it activating on summon, which it ha is not activating right now. So this is it. Why, 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 why? Did we not do what I said? Why? Why? Caesar Valius, big welcome, lady. Why did we not raise and destroy her? Why? Is there a reason why we could not do it? If Lovely was on the field, we couldn't. Oh my gosh. Lady's not a trigger. Now we're doing it. But now we get a trap for free. Huh. So in the TCG, if someone goes big welcome chain lady, you go, no, I chain to your late, your big welcome. They can't block you from responding with a quick effect. Nibiru, <laughs> the field, let's go. So the lovely would have had nothing to return back to the hand to trigger besides itself, so it wouldn't trigger. But now we have Nibiru to return back Nibiru to trigger and get popping. This whole duel got messed up now. Holy moly. We should not have that Daruma. Lovely should... We had no way to stop the Lovely because of the Nibiru. Let's get popping. Non-turn player is going to be popping the field spell to stop the field spell. Let's go if we want to. Or we pop a card from the hand instead. We go for that field spell, stopping the Raisin from being summoned. Very well done. Now Snow Devil. We do have the ability to summon a Caesar Valius with enough attributes to then destroy any card in the field, with enough attributes to destroy all monsters on the field. And what we have to really worry about is Lovely making it to the main phase. As soon as they make it to the main phase, they have turn player priority to activate right then and there to grab a trap from the graveyard, which maybe we want to stop. So I'm thinking draw phase, standby phase, we Snow Devil. Oh, oh, we did not. So I, I feel like l the Labyrinth players is gaining a bunch of extra advantage that we maybe should have tried to stop earlier. And remember, we can't chain to traps with our monster effects. We could chain Snow Devil though. We're going for the full field wipe right here, right now. 
You could argue that we should not have tried to disrupt the lovely early because they would have had a way to summon it back on the field anyway. We could argue that. But I do think that the Daruma should not be there. Pantera could destroy the column of spell and trap cards it is in. Spinning back Pantera. Caesar's gonna spin her back instead to come forth and summon. Pantera can't chain to her effect to... Uh, okay, so she was activating the column destruction there, right? Was she? Let me see that real quick before we get... Okay, so that she's no longer in the column. So on the resolution, does not destroy the Welcome Labyrinth. There we go. So for example, if they had Skill Drain, you can't activate her, then return her back to destroy the Skill Drain. That would be nuts. Caesar Valius reveal three different attributes for the non-target pop. You don't know what's getting popped as soon as you choose the Daruma. You can't flip it up. Original Sinful sending the Raisin to summon our Jet Synchron. This is such a wild deck. Holy moly. Non-target pop again. Speaking of Skill Drain, we got Skill Drain live in our game right here, right now. Now, Caesar Valius is how you play around Skill Drain. You activate Caesar Valius, you then chain return it back to the hand. That is how you can stop the Skill Drain, but we don't have a way to return it back to the hand. Damn. Damn. So uh, this really could just have not worked out, but it did. We have Link, Kiribo, Jet Synchron, discard to reborn itself from the graveyard, further linking this into a Dark Charmer. We are fully negated. Chandelier discarding Nibiru to set up a Labyrinth setup. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. It's too much. The skill drain, draining the skill from le the Snake Eyes Vanquish Soul player. Now, Clock doesn't let a newly set quick play activate, right? The, uh, where does it say it? You could activate, you, okay, you could activate one normal trap that was set this turn, not a quick play. Very well done. Bistiel Runic versus Purely. Starting this off with a Guiding Quem on Summon, activating to send a Golden Sword Soul from the deck to the grave, as we then Runic Dispelling a Hug and onto the field to make a level six Synchro with and also search our field spell. Now, what can we do? If you activate a monster, we can negate it or destroy it, or we can negate anything with Baron DeFloor. So we have double disruption plus max C. What's good, what's good? Ash on summon, negate by returning the opponent's banished card back into the deck. This does not destroy, it is just a negate of the effect, not the card. Triple tactics talent, forcing out the other negate of Baron DeFloor. Double negate gone, and now we are going to have to be not be playing under Maxi because we have Call by the Grave. Called by the Grave, finger the Maxi, negate. Very well done. Now, we have used up our normal summon, so Lily cannot be normaled here. Ash is still activatable to summon a Snake Eyes card from the deck. Let's activate the Lily, grabbing the my friend purely, my friend purely grabbing a purely quick play spell from the deck here. Memory, 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 guaranteeing the happy memory, sending itself plus the my friend purely with the Ash effect to summon a Poplar searching for the original sin. We are now going to exceed into Ghost Rick Dullahan, further exceeding into Angel of Mischief. Detach material, add a Ghost Rick Spell or Trap from the deck to our hand. Ghost Rick Shot, special summon a Ghost Rick from the graveyard, further exceeding it up into another Angel of Mischief. Angel of Mischief, not being a hard once return, searching our deck again for a Ghost Rick Renovation. Now the Dullahan is going to be adding the Ghost Rick Shot in the graveyard back to our hand as we then make a UDF with double Angel of Mischief. Poplar being sent to the graveyard, triggering to equip itself into the back row as we then activate the Happy Memory, discarding the Ghost Rick Shot to summon a Lily from the deck. Now, Lily has not targeted a Quick Play spell in the graveyard yet to perform our Xyz. We have a full UDF for the Monster Negate ready as we then make E Purely Happiness. 
E purely happiness is absolutely insane. Attack number one, every attack we activate to search our deck for a purely card and reduce a monster in the field by half. We're going to directly chain the happiness to the happy memory to then give us an additional attack. Come forth and summon our regular purely. Look at the top three cards of our deck. Add nothing among those three. Attack number two. We get attacked up to four times. So these are two attacks with three more, two more attacks coming. Happy, suck up again, further reducing the Baron to floor. Okay. Why have we not made Baron to floor indestructible to attack over Baron to floor? We keep making Draco future indestructible. Okay, so I believe we have a fourth and final attack as we keep on reducing. I, we just want Baron to floor destroyable, I guess. Suck up again. This should be the fourth and final attack, if I've been counting correctly. Goodbye to the Baron floor. Searching again. Get uh, four searches. Very nice. And it's got how many materials? It's got six materials. So we could then overlay it main phase two into the E purely, X purely nor that is. Send a card to control to suck up a card on the field. Get sucking. And then we have the purely street making newly special summon purely's untargetable. Dullahan into the angel of mischief. And we're going to eat purely street. Equip onto the Nor. The Nor is unaffected from activated effects. It has the ability to draw one during the standby phase. So we could spin how many times here? We could spin four times plus negate a monster. We have about five disruption. And we just drew into a, a hand trap. So we have six disruption. We didn't choose to ash, we didn't care. Six disruption, pop the field spell. We're okay with that. Golden Sword Soul, activate Banish to summon the Guiding Quem. We're gonna use the Draco Future to negate. Negate and take control, by the way. Your Quem is now mine, so you can't sync her with it. We're gonna link with Maxi and Omega into a Donner Dagger for Hire. Donner Dagger for Hire pops a card in the field, but the Nor is unaffected by, and the Draco Future cannot be destroyed by, so it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> okay. Purely's. If you don't OTK with the happy memory, you do want to be making the X purely Noir in main phase two at least. Very well done. Snake Eye purely, Snake Eye purely. Let's go, let's go. Runic tip, just the tip, banishing a happy memory off the top of the deck. So that four attack play we did earlier is now down to three attacks only. Chain the maxi to the effect to special summon. I've said this multiple times that the Bestial Runic deck does not do well against Max C. Well, we had a negate for that Max C, so we're now doing well. Let's go. Trigger the field spell, return two cards in the graveyard back of the deck to draw two, as we then go Baguska. Baguska pass. Any non-link monster will be forced into defense and will be negated. Okay. Can we play under Baguska? What links do we have? None. <laughs> the entire extra deck is exceeds only. Huh? We can't out it. Baguska only has its effect while it's in defense. Now that it's an attack, it becomes untargetable and it's no longer negating the field as it also negates your own monsters. You have Hug and Bin summoned, which will be used alongside the Quem. We cannot attack this turn, so you don't really have to worry too much besides them building up their field. Runic Fountain, return one, draw one, reborn the Ecclesia from the graveyard with the effect of the Quem by moving a card from the extra deck, making a Tri-Edge Master on summon, draw a card, which will be used with the Ecclesia to make a level 10 Synchro, making our Baron de Floor. Baron de Floor, wipe out the My Friend purely, but keep it up while we want to keep on making plays because we don't want to open up the opponent to an impermanence. Banishing for the Ball Drake using the effect of the Golden Sword Soul to summon Quem onto the field to make another level 10 Synchro as we have the Dispater. Dispater, reborning the Golden Sword Soul back in the field. Now we're gonna pop the My Friend purely as it is safe to do so without fear of impermanence. Ecclesia add back to the hand due to a fusion monster being sent to the grave this turn. There's the Imperm, which would have been dead if we left up the My Friend purely. But then they'd have My Friend purely. Runic Slumber is just trying to banish cards off the deck randomly. 
did not randomly banish three Poplars like we hoped to do so. Triggering the field spell to at least draw one. Maybe drawing to a hand trap here. We do have Dispater and just Dispater to negate or destroy a monster. No hand trap off of that field spell draw. Let's make our Dullahan. So what? Ooh, we Zeus it. We are going into Downard. Now, the Dispater does not stop Zeus. This is huge. This is a big play. We could Zeus how many times? I, four materials. So we activate it once, it gets negated. We activate again, we full field wipe. So we're actually gonna destroy the Zeus instead of negating it, so it does not have to even activate again. Wipe it, including the field spell. Field spell limited to one. Now, Runic Gary could grab the field spell in the graveyard back to the hand. We have original sinful, send to summon. Let's now speed this up because there are no hand traps for Brock. Lily grabbing the my friend, my friend, come to me. We're not activating it yet. We're making a plump. We're going to then plump it up. Equip the opponent's runic fountain, which now cannot be grabbed back and is limited to one. That's a really good way, besides banishing it, to get rid of the runic fountain. We have regular purely off the top of the deck. Come to me, purely leap into now Dullahan. Dullahan into the Angel of Mischief. We are going to be grabbing a Ghost Rick Shot. Dullahan is going to be activating. We are going to Ghost Rick Shot it onto the field. Now going into the Angel of Mischief. Detach grabbing a Renovation. Dullahan return the Ghost Rick Shot in the graveyard back to our hand as we then make a UDF. UDF is a monster negate plus take control. Okay, we are in main phase two, so we cannot battle here. We do have unaffected from activate effects plus spin three cards in the field during graveyard back into the deck. We have a monster negate. Those are our four public disruptions. We do have purely leap into a monster negate. We also have a finger, but we're not sure if that's going to be good disruption yet. It's about five disruption. Negate the quem and take control. Now down to four disruption. Three spins plus a monster negate. Call of the Grave is that extra fifth disruption, which we weren't sure it was going to be disruption, which it's not disrupting because the Druid Swarm's going to banish, so we still get the search. But we still can't summon the Lubellion from the graveyard, which is quite nasty. Still have Spin, 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 and Monster Negates. Golden Sword Soul is activating. We're chaining Magna Hut to the Golden Sword Soul. We're not going to be using the Nor in any way. Nor can't spin your own graveyard back of the deck to stop a Bistil from being summoned. We're, we're, we're chilling on the Nor, because the Nor needs five materials to be unaffected from activated effects. So we're just waiting. Now we have Chaos Angel. Now, a good way to see the Chaos Angel is clicking on it, reading it. If both of these are lit, then they have both active effects. Monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle, and Synchros you control are unaffected from monster effects activated. So it's just like an X purely Nor. Interesting. Targeting the Purely Leap, which is one of our four disruptions, which is now going to be banished, and the Draco Future was sent to the grave, just like the Druid Swarm. We just have three spins, which we can't spin the Chaos Angel. What is the out? We don't have Goddess. We can't destroy by battle. We are going to get Suckin, giving us seven materials. Looking for three. Uh, Imperm is an out. That is correct. We get drawn to an Imperm. We get focused on a spell or trap card to deal with the Chaos Angel. The X Purely Noir now has four spins, and we're going to be drawn during the standby phase. Just draw one. To defense we go. And we will eventually draw into our impermanence because the X Purely Noir is going to keep on drawing. Multiple draws. Send the Sleepy Memory, suck up a card on the field. Let's speed this up. The field spell can equip the Sleepy Memory so that during the opponent's standby phase, we can draw three. We're going to draw into Impermanence right now, but then we're going to use it by set setting it next turn. We will draw the out. We will draw the out. We did not draw the out. Unbelievable. We have eight cards left in the deck. How many Impermanences are banished through Runic cards? If you're thinning your deck out and Runic banishes cards off the top of your deck, that is their secondary win condition to deck you out. Huh. 
We have a banished imperm. Are there any imperms in the graveyard? We only have one imperm left in the deck. And if it gets banished, I don't think we have an out to Chaos Angel and we deck out. Huh? Okay, there's only one imperm left. Did not get banished. We have two cards left in the deck. Do, do we even have a third imperm? <laughs> we, we equipped the final card from the deck. So the final card should be in permanence. But if we set it, don't we have zero cards in our deck? Then we draw to nothing and we lose? Bro, why did you equip from the deck? You gave yourself a 50% chance to win, now a 100% chance to lose. <laughs> what? Wait, does he have the trap to shuffle back? Purely leap. Purely Leap is banished by the Chaos Angel, which returns three Purely cards in the graveyard back in the deck. We don't have another copy. That's it. Nor could then spin it, but we don't have a Purely Leap in the graveyard to return back in the deck. We used the field spell to equip the final card from our deck that wasn't the impermanence. <laughs> oh my gosh, and we needed Purely Leap to return cards back in the deck, but it was banished off of the Chaos Angel. Ain't no way, Towers versus Towers. Lily searching for the Ma Friend. Purely Ma Friend, Purely going to reveal three quick play spells. Randomly, one of them will go to the hand. Wanting the delicious memory, unfortunately, it is limited to one, so it is much less likely to be allowing us to set up with our X Purely Nor turn one. Chaining the max C to the happy memory, so we're just not gonna discard on resolution. I don't care, that's fine. We're going to just use the Lily to equip the pretty memory to have a simple one monster negate. With that one monster negate, with the leap, we could turn it into an X Purely Nor. It won't be unaffected, but it will have the ability to spin once. So we have one monster negate, one spin, but it's actually double spin if we equip the sleepy memory onto it. Interesting. Uh, I was thinking that we would sleepy memory equip on a beauty during the standby phase to get an additional draw here, maybe. Now, the sleepy being equipped could be de stopped by any runic card if you chain link block it. Max C in response to an attempt to special summon, we are going to be fingering the C. Negate. All right, all right, all right. So why did we hold on to Sleepy instead of equipping during the standby? We're gonna activate Sleepy. Did not chain link block the Sleepy, thus we gain an additional disruption if we were to leap. Okay. The beauty also changed the battle position of the Gary. So it gains that additional effect. Popping the back row, which is protected from the happy. I don't know how you're even supposed to remember stuff like that. If you click the card, highlight it, it's not influenced by anything. It has no counters or nothing. You just have to remember. Return three in the graveyard back into the deck. And I think for TCG, you'd have to be taking notes and then show a note to a judge when they get called on the opponent saying that it was not protected. The Guska forcing the beauty into defense, thus it is now negated. We don't have a good out to the Baguska. Our purely deck can't really out Baguska, can't out the Chaos Angel. What are our plays? And the Anima zone, we ain't playing Anima. <laughs> no Anima, but you should not be summoning that in the Anima zone, that is correct. Do not do that. Now Baguska kills itself after a few turns of detaching materials or we decide to put it into attack position and we're ready to start attacking. The beauty will be a monster negates. The purely leap will be a double spin. So triple disruption using one of three to, uh, what did we just, we negated Magna Hut from searching during the end phase. That did not seem worth it. I guess we really want to go into our EP, X purely Nor early. We're going to chain special summon our runic Hagen in response to the summon of the x Nor, which is not protected, by the way. It is affected by all card effects and just has two spins. Get ready to get spinning. Chat's already saying it was a good fight, Earl. Is Earl losing this? 
When and what do we spin Detach 2 to target the Ecclesia that's attempting to be reborn by the Quem? Detach another 2 to then spin the Quem on the field back in the deck so you cannot make a Baron to floor with it. Leaving up the Runic Fountain to draw one. Just one. Draw one. Not a big deal. Skip the battle phase. Now, if we were to make a Zeus, it would be a one material Zeus. So that's not good. We are going to use the My Friend Purely Reveal. Three Purely cards, randomly grabbing the Pretty Memory. Lily on Summon is going to get fingered from the Lily Engrave. Purely Leap is going to dodge the finger by returning the Lily Engrave back in the deck. Thus, we do not get negated. That was all public knowledge. Very well done. No negate for you. Successfully searching for the Stray Purely Street which will make newly summoned Purely's untargetable the turn they are summoned. We're now going to have to be playing against Max C, but we could also use our Triple Tactics Talent. So let's get to it as we go into the Happiness, which will have a total of four attacks. Four attacks and four reduces. On the attack, we're going to try to banish a Happy off the top of the deck unsuccessfully. We're going to pop the Field Spell to successfully banish a Happy off the top of the deck. Also triggering the field spell to draw into no disruption. So from four attacks and four searches and four reduces, we now only have three. Three attacks, three reduces, three searches. Reduce the Baguska. So uh, attack number one, we have two more attacks. And we just lost an attack. <laughs> Let's go. We, uh, we're on our, I think that's our final attack because we don't have another happy to search. That's it. All the, we chain link blocked one of four attacks. We banished the other of four attacks. Thus, we only had two attacks. Pretty memory into the purely all under max. C, by the way, off the top of the deck, reveal three, come to me, my friend purely, which has already activated. Still under max C, we are still special summoning and the thing I want to say is when you special summon under Maxi against Runic, they can't one turn kill you next turn because they're locking out of the battle phase. Generally, a lot of people under Maxi against Runic, they just pass. I'm not saying that that would be the correct thing to do here, but it is less emergent to continue your special summoning. Now, if you pass without good disruption, that does give them a good chance to have a really good field, even though they can't attack you for game. Setting up the plump. Get plump and plumping up from the graveyard so we could suck up cards in the field. We could get rid of the field spell. That's what I'm thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Send the happiness, suck up the tragedy. Holy moly. Plump is going to be chain link blocked. So we're not going to be able to equip the sleepy, but we could equip it during the draw phase. Yeah, this is turning out to be worth it. I think so. Ooh, into an X purely Nor. So we are not equipping the Sleepy. We then get to use the effect again. Keep on sucking. We have sucked four times. Four sucks. Field spell, tragedy, bestial, bestial, suck, 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 suck. And now we have nine material, which is spin. Four times plus unaffected from activated effects under Max C, even though it's against Runic. Was this worth it? I, I think so. I think that was pretty damn good. That was good. We have no draws during the standby phase, though. Four spins, four spins. And we can afford to spin twice with while still being unaffected. Uh-oh, we have 11 cards in our deck. They see Nor, they see deck out as the win condition. And they still surrender. We're not, it, without the field spell, and it's only limited to one, it's not in the grave, we can't return it back with Gary, it's attached to the ex purely Nor. What do you do? We don't get that continual recycle of banishing and drawing, thus we scoop it up. Very well done. Taking the maxi challenge without the opportunity to win that turn and still prevailing. That takes a lot of balls. That was huge of Earl GB. Very well done. Let's hop in another match. What do we ash? What do we ash? I think we bait the ash and then we grass and card destruct, right? Original Sinful, try to bait that Ash. Ash has gone through, now the Grass is safe. Grass, if used now, would mill 19 cards. Now gonna mill 17 because we're searching for a Crystal Beast. And the Tier Limit Field Spell here, making our card destruction even bigger. 
wanted secret. I mean, we could freely do whatever we want until we see the max C. Activate field spell, searching for our rhino heart. We have not used up our normal summon yet, using the grass, milling how many different viable cards did we mill here? The Tearly Cash Tear will mill an additional two. We can then shuffle any three cards from the player's graveyard back into the deck. Cell Lake will search for a monster. Scream will search for a trap. The Destrato will reborn from the grave. The Flame Burge only activates from the field or hand to the grave, not off of the deck. The Field Spell, uh, I should say the Sinful Spoil Trap will be able to negate any effect in response to a Diablo Star or uh, Sinful Spoil effect activating. We have the original Sinful, which I believe we already activated. We can't do that again. We have Wanted Seeker to draw a card this turn. Holy moly, let's get searching. There's the draw after we added a Sharon and a Crime, which can negate anything. We have Enemy Controller, Imperm, Negate. Econ, take. If there were another monster in the field, would dodge the impermanence. Okay. When are we card destructioning? Sharon. Into the max freaking C. Draw per special summon. Come forth and summon and mill three cards off the top of the deck. We now have Fairy Tail Snow Disruption. Heartbeat being sent to the graveyard will recycle the Sullyak, which, by the way, I, Sullyak is limited to one. What? Why? We have negate anything with crime. We have negate a monster on the field with Sullyak. We have trigger a fusion with Sharon being sent to the graveyard, which could turn into disruption. We have pop a card in the field with the field spell. We have econ take. We have fairy tale snow in the grave. We have about six disruptions after getting max seed. Am I correct on that? Yes, I believe so. Let's go. Oak with nothing to reborn going into Link Eribo. What's good? What's good? What's good? Original Sinful, send the Link Rebo to summon from the deck in Ash. Ash on summon, getting crimed, returning it back in the deck. Negate and spin. You are gone. Five more disruptions left. And obviously we can't play through five more. Diablo Star being triggered. Come forth and summon. If we chained Maxi to it, it would have been negated. Sharon is triggering to fuse. We're about to summon our other disruption. <laughs> I want this deck. I, I want Zeta's D. I'm taking it. I'm going to be copying it. I think this is what I'm playing tonight. I think so. 60 card tier. That looks good. Can't chain Max C to the activation of Diablo Star from the hand because it does not activate. So you have to Max C early, but then you potentially get Gammud. If Ash grab a Poplar, Poplar come forth and summon. This is when we whip out the C. Let's speed this up to see how much we are willing to do under the seat. We got Divine Temple, set up a Flame Burge into the back row, making our Mask Arena then pass. So it's a draw two with Mask Arena Disruption. Not that bad. This is a big reason why Snake Eyes is good against, uh, you know, pretty much everything. This is what they do against Maxi. So write this down. Poplar draw one, Mask Arena draw two, set up a Flame Burge into the back row, all under Maxi. This is your play that you want to do. Wanted Seeker in the draw phase, come to us, Diablo Star. Within the standby phase, we're gonna be dropping that Maxi so we don't play into that triple tactics talent. Discarding the Triva Karma with the Diablo Star. Diablo Star will be activated into search. We are also triggering our Divine Temple to summon our Flame Burst in the back row. Gia, what's going on over there? Triva Karma is gonna be searching our deck for probably a Tier Limit Field spell. Yes, it will be indeed, which could be searching for a Sharon or a Rhino Heart. We have not used up our normal summon yet. Setting up an original Sinful here. We could get ready with the Mascarina to make a four material Apollo USA, which the Triple Tactics talent will take control of. So what do we do? When do we mask and what is the best play to do? We're going right here, right now. Now Mascarina into Apollo will at least be able to negate whatever is summoned on trigger, but if we sent anything to the grave that would trigger like Poplar, Poplar will chain link block the ash from being negated. So we have to pass on Poplar to negate the ash. And if we chain link block it, we won't have another opportunity to negate because the triple tactics talent will take. What do we do? Hey, we got Valor. So we don't have to worry about chain link blocking. You, you didn't uh, ash? Did ash? Uh, why you ash not activatable? Wait, you stole the ash? The ash? Why are we not ashing? Why are we no ash? 
you play Ash, but no activate. I don't, I don't get it. Why you Ash, not activate? Where's your Poplar? Huh? Huh? What? Okay. Triple Tactics Talent take control of the Apollo. We're now setting up with the Primeval Planet to grab a normal summonable Rhino Heart, sending a Hobnis from the deck to the grave. With the stolen Apollo USA, we have Quadra Monster Negate. N negate Effect Veiler, mate. Now, the Veiler on the Kit Cal is a great play, but the Apollo USA will be ready to negate. We also trigger the Field Spell to pop the opposing Field Spell. You wanted, wanted the biggest Apollo? You wanted the big... Okay, you did not want to activate Ash because you thought that there was a chance that he would pass on all of his trigger effects to negate with Apollo instead. I, I guess that could be understandable. So uh, what happened here? Th this summons, then uh, this... They would have to pass on... Uh, yeah, they, I guess they are just passing the Poplar. Just the Poplar was activating, right? Kit Cal sent itself to the graveyard to come forth and summon the tier limit Cash Tira. We're going to be milling eight cards here. Mill eight. Eight, eight, eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. We got Fairy Tale Snow in the graveyard ready to get banishing and summoning. This deck looks like so much fun. I, I can't. Holy moly. Salvation gets searching. We have fused so far with just one tier limit. We could fuse just one more time. The ceiling is two fusions. In TCG and OCG, they could still fuse three times. Sharon mill three off the top of the deck. We're now going to be making a Time Thief Redoer, which could detach the Sharon by card effect to trigger our second and final fusion play. Activate Sharon. Ghost Bell negate. Apollo USA. Not negate. I, did we know that Effect Veiler would have negated your Apollo? Interesting. Okay. You, you just want a fat Apollo. Fat Apollo. Thick Apollo. Buried Tail Snow. We're all under Max C here. We're going a bit too crazy. Come forth and summon Destrato from the graveyard, show conning into a Baron to floor to further protect the Apollo USA. So I, I think what we were fearful of was a Nibiru. We negate Ghost Bell. Then we get Nibiru'd, and then Nibiru stops you from even negating the Ghost Bell. So it's not really the Veiler. It, we want to protect from Nibiru. Pop the Diablo Star. Seeker, return the original Sinful to draw one. Shokan into Hida. Hida ready to steal a monster from the grave. <laughs> 10 cards in the hand right now. Now 11. Come to me, Flame Burge. And what's great about this field when you're taking the maxi challenges, they can't use any of their impermanences. They keep on drawing them. They're completely unusable. So if you, as long as you have a field that could stop a Nibiru, you're good. Baylor onto Apollo, Apollo negate, since we have the Baron to floor to negate a Nibiru. We're fine, okay. The battle we go, let's go. Mudora, spin three cards from me, the player's graveyard back in the deck that would trigger the field spell if we had not used it already. Open field with over 12,000 damage on the field. Attack for game, all under the maxi challenge. Very well done. Zeta got max seed. Both games, by the way. Game one, max seed on his turn one. Game two, max seed on his turn two. And still prevailed. Bestial Runic versus... Math Mech. There's a lot of Math Mech. I think there's at least two Bistial Runics in the tournament. And uh, two to three Math Mech. Let's go. So by splitting the transcode into three, we now have Mascarina and Terahertz sending the Disave Worm, which can negate a spell or trap card activation. We have nothing to stop the Serenir. Special summon the Ecclesia, normal summon the Bestial Alibur, come forth and summon the Golden Sword Soul to then be used with the Bestial Alibur to make a Dugaris. This could draw two or reborn from the grave. What are we doing? Detach two to draw two, effect Veiler. 
Negate! Ain't happening. You're not going to be drawing two under my watch. We have runic dispelling. So what you would do here is you would chain your dark fluid to the dispelling to send aggregator, and then Huggin comes out, turn player Huggin activates a search for field spell, non-turn player aggregator targets the Huggin to negate the search, and then uh, you just made a pretty good play. Discard slumber, grab the runic fountain. And now we're super factorialing, which we held that Serenir for. This is it, this is the moment. We did not banish the Sigma because we saved it to banish the diameter. No negate, no field or hand send for you. And very well done. That is how you do it. Diameter is now gone from the game. We are going to be using the Golden Sword Soul to summon an Ecclesia. Now the Mascarina is popping off to go into a three material Apollo USA. We can't attack over her because we lost our battle phase through the runic cards. So what do we got to do? Serenir sent from the deck to the grave, which will be a free negate since the main way to counter Apollo is attacking into her, which we cannot do. Dispater is going to be attempting to summon a banished monster. You are going to negate and we are going to negate the negate by returning your banished card back into the deck, mate. Negate, but do not, no destroy. Negate, and then you actually don't even reduce after being negated, so you still have two more negates. As we then make a Tri Edge Master Tri Edge on summon, draw a card. Just negate, why not? Our card's not negated, the effect was negated. Reduce negate, we have one more negate. During the end phase, are we going to be terror hurting for something? Why did, what did we save this for? Nothing, like at least send a Dotscaper, Trigger, come forth and summon, nothing, no. To battle we go. All monster effects are negated in the battle phase due to the effect of the Dark Fluid. This is it. Send a multiplication. Multiply the attack from 8,000 to 16,000 attack. Bah. Boost. Lethal damage for over 14,000 damage. Why is Dugaris in attack position? Game. Number two, let's do it. Klesia being normal summon, since the opponent does not have a monster, it is not a free one. We do have to worry about when to use our impermanence. We're gonna stop the search of the field spell. Otherwise, within the other formats, you don't know if they already have a field spell in their hand. This could be considered safe, but then runic tip is another way to search for another field spell as we are doing right here. Very well done. We got that Runic Fountain, which we will be drawing three from. This is looking really broken as we summon a Gary, trigger the field spell, draw three, draw an additional card with Coral Dragon, make a Baron to floor. So Baron to floor and draw four is what we're doing. One, two, three, four, and Baron de floor. Yep. Okay, we have used up our normal summon and we drew into our Bestial so we can continue to cook. We have the Golden Sword Soul. If a monster is banished, you could then trigger this effect to come forth and summon. We now have our Dispater. Dispater, reborn our banished Golden Sword Soul, and we then make an Omega. Omega, banish a random card from the hand. Uh, Circular's good, Defensor's good. They're both pretty good. That would have been our normal summon, so uh, both are acceptable here. Grab the Ecclesia back during the end phase. We have negate a monster plus negate anything plus draw two to maybe draw into two potential hand traps. Math next circular, the dissipator is going to destroy it instead of negating it because negating it, it could still be normal summon. Destroying it, it cannot be normal summon. So that was the correct play. Very well done. Smiting storm, randomly banishing cards off the top of the deck during the end phase to trigger the field spell to then also trigger the golden sword soul. What a great card. What the heck? I, I don't remember this card being used this much. Special summoning the Ecclesia. Return to draw two. Runic Destruction go for the 50-50, taking out the Super Factorial. Now, the randomly banished, oh, we don't have a diameter randomly banished yet. Okay, two out of three circulars are gone. Baron to floor, wiping out the finger. The finger is gonna be banished the Magna Hut. We cannot attack for game. We have lost our battle phase. Be gone from the grave, Magna Hut. 
<laughs> Even though we can't attack for game, the field advantage is too much. The dissipator is going to summon a body. What we could do, we could Omega banish, then resummon Omega, then Omega banish. So banish two cards in the hand, and then we still have the disruption negate of the dissipator. We still have the, you know, we got too much. We got too much. Small world bridging to grab the circular from our deck. Let's speed this up since we have no hand traps whatsoever. And uh, we have Desave Worm, which also negates evenly matched. So what are we afraid of? Two evenly matches? What, what are we afraid of? Okay, sure. Early Laplacian, so we lost out on sending a card from the field to the grave, but we now have another, another negate. Now we have double negate. Well, we're gonna send a card from the hand to the grave at least. Okay, so that that's one of them. Uh, were we, I guess we were just baiting the evenly. That's it, bait the evenly. That is one of the negates there as we attempt to flash fire pop it. Okay, so we have four more disruption. Yeah, I, you know, in response to our runic spell, that is when you send aggregator. That is the moment. That is when you send it. It will activate as the non turn player to negate the hug in. Or if they activate a runic card with the runic fountain, you then send the aggregator to negate the fountain on the higher chain link to it activating. And then they, even if they choose to not activate it, it's still negated for the full turn. So you, th those are two ways to negate with the aggregator. But it only works on their turn. So uh, just in case you're playing against Runic and you hate Runic, I, I'm giving you this tip. If you have a Terra Hertz, if it's your turn and they activate a Runic spell and you chain the Terra Hertz to send an aggregator, that's not a good play because your turn player, the aggregator will be chain link one, the Runic Fountain will be chain link two, they're still going to draw. But if it's their turn, that's when you could chain send aggregator in response to a runic spell activating to checkmate the field spell. Is that understandable? Ash negate draw one. Okay, let's go. We still have Mascarina, Aggregator, and Disave Worm. We have three more cards. Disave Worm can negate the activation, not the effect. If you negate the effect through something like a diameter effect, it stays in the field. You negate the activation, it goes to the grave. Very well done. Regained, return the banished card to draw. We're negating draw ones. Upstart Goblin, negate. Upstart Goblin, negate. We have one more disruption left and that is through the Mascarina. All right, let's go. <laughs> we did it. To battle we go in one of the coolest ways to lethal damage, send the multiplication, multiply the attack, 16,000 attack, lethal damage. Damn. Thank you very much for watching the top 16 video, the top eight grand finale and top decklist will be continuing in the video posted on the next day. We are out.